Kieran, let's begin with your Jerome Entrant Long River, and I've got to begin with that pedigree. By champion horse of the year, AP Indy, and out of Round Pond, who earned about two million and who Darley paid about six million for. Describe Long River. How's he taken to his training early on in his career? He's really developed um, late this fall. He's come on very well from his two races. Um, the last two races, first race, you know, was a, a great race, but usually we don't win first time out anyway. He ran a, a winning race, second start, but finished second to a nice cold of Todd Fletcher's. And then he came back and won, it, you know, his uh, next race, which is the third race and last race. And he's doing very well since then. He worked at 48 flat, um, his one work, and he's really just come on a lot for prop racing. Karen, take a moment to describe him for our audience from a physical standpoint, if you would. He's a good-looking chestnut colt, you know, medium size. So he's a very athletic horse, and he has a pedigree that hopefully he keeps going because the Belmont would be right up his alley by AT and out of an awesome again mayor. Kieran, following a solid second behind Delhome in his second career start, he broke his maiden here on December 15th at Aqueduct. For our audience, he is number one in here. Kieran, talk about this winning effort, if you would. Well, we told Irad that we were thinking about the Jerome. We don't like to do that um, very often to be overconfident, but we felt like we had the best horse on the day. And he was down inside, laying third, and had to, you know, slip through on the inside, turn us for home. But we thought it was a great educational race for him, and he got a lot out of it. And he ran well, and he didn't get abused in the race. So it's a little quick back three weeks, but we feel like he can handle it. Kieran, he appears to have, I guess what I would refer to as some two-turn natural speed. Talk about that. Yes, he is forwardly placed, and Irad did a great job in laying third and being very patient with him. So, you know, we'll just see how the race unfolds and let Irad make decisions, and we'll watch the earlier races on the day and see if there's any bias to the track. But we think he'll run very well. And it's fun to get there and see how he stacks up with grade two, you know, horses. Here, as they uh, round the far turn, he's got to wait for a while behind a tiring leader before he gets through here down inside on the fence. That's got to be a good education for him. Yeah, it's a very good education, and we were happy that he got through, and Irad was patient and waited, and they slipped through on the rail and then held off a late closer, but we feel like that it was a very good effort, and it's a big step up from eight to a grade two. We know that, but we think, you know, he deserves a chance. Karen, right or wrong, the perception is when you leave a horse in New York for the winter, especially with an outfit like yours, which goes to Florida, the perception is that that horse isn't that good. He's not in the upper echelon of horses. Is that the case with Long River? Why did you decide to leave him in New York? Well, it's just that the two turn races, you know, the maiden races are there and they'll go. The Jerome is there. And I have to say that PJ Campo and Naira has done a great job with the three year old Phillies and Colts. And they've brought the Jerome forward. And there's a race once a month for three year old Colts and Phillies. And Darley has had great success in the winter there before, and hopefully Shadwell has also. So they're supportive of the races there. And Art Magnus has been with me 20 years, and he's very capable, and I have great help there. So it's not uh, – he's certainly our best chance to go to the Kentucky Derby right now. So we, we, we think he's our best three-year-old right now, and it just worked out that he's in New York where – we're supportive of New York racing. All right, Karen, let's move on to Asia for the Busanda. Pretty nice closing third in her debut while galloping out well in front of the field. Talk about this filly, if you would. Um, she ran very well first time out, closed late, 
and then she came on from the the race and won easy. It was it was a wet track last time to win by eleven lengths. So we think that she's a real nice filly, and we're looking for black tight question mark two turns. You know we don't know, but we think she can handle two turns fine. It's a it's a step up. You know, going from a maiden to a stake anytime and going two turns. So it's a big step up, but we think that she's of that quality. Karen, we are about to take a look at her maiden victory back on December 9th at Aqueduct. For our audience, she is number 1A. Talk about this 11 length victory, as you mentioned, over a sealed sloppy track. Well, she was impressive, and the ironic thing was the other half of the entry had to be scratched at the gate, so she ran for purse money only, and her mother won by nine lengths at Belmont in 2007 and ran for purse money only, so it's kind of ironic about that, but she's a very nice filly and was always there in hand, and he had plenty of you know, horse all the time that he did. So she was very impressive winning by 11 lengths, and hopefully she can, you know, rebound from that race and run well Saturday. Karen, she showed much more speed in this second start at seven-eighths than in her debut at three-quarters. Was the speed due to the wet track? Was more speed due to the fact that she had had the experience of a race under her belt? What are your thoughts? We just don't win first time out that often, and usually they come on a lot from first race to second race. I think we've had about 10% first time out and 27% second time out. So it's, it was just an educational situation, and she came on a lot from her race. The age-old question for handicappers, Karen, how much of this 11-length victory was due to track condition. What did Eddie Castro have to say to you or to Artie after the race? Well, no, he was very impressed with her race, as was Alan Garcia after her first race. But we hope it wasn't due to the race track, but it did scratch down to a four or five horse field that day. But she ran impressively and won easy, and she's talented, so we don't think it has to be wet. Kieran, before we let you go, let's get an update on a couple of your other stakes runners, beginning with a newly turned three-year-old Fortify, who was second in the Hopeful and third in the Champagne last year. What is his status currently? He is in Dubai. We sent him back to Dubai with Alpha and MC this winter. They're wintering there, and they're due to come back in April or May. So hopefully Fortify, after a sports place finish in the Breeders' Cup, handles the a synthetic track at Maydam for Godolphin, and he comes back to us um, in the spring. And questing, so dominant at Saratoga in the coaching club and the Alabama, powerful victories there. What is her status, Karen, at present? She is in Lexington, Kentucky with Johnny Burke at Kingland. She had a small chip taken out of her right hind ankle after the Breeders' Cup. Her, she took a pretty good um, hit in her eye that closed that night, but her eye is okay. She's doing okay, and she will be back to us this spring. Well, that's very good uh, the news that we're going to get her back. And, Karen, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having joined us this morning on Down the Stretch. Happy New Year to you and yours, and uh, all the best later this afternoon with Long River in the Jerome and Asia in the Busanda. Thank you, Mark. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Karen McLaughlin, okay. ladies and gentlemen, the trainer of Long River and a